Good evening. Tonight, I'm going to tell you another strange and unusual story of the unexplainable which lies behind the veil. Under powerful emotional stress, the mind and body are capable of strange, almost unbelievable feats. Tonight's story is one such case, taken from a true and documented incident. Edmond Vallier was not a man who loved lightly. When he gave his heart, it was with a deep and abiding passion meant to last for all time. What would I do without you? Edmond, dear, I'm very much afraid you'll have to learn to do just that. Never. <laughs> you see, I'm going to be married. You're joking. Oh, you ought to know me better than that by now. I have no sense of humor when it comes to love or money. But I thought you loved me. Well, of course I did. But what has that to do with it? I don't understand. Edmond, you are sweet, and I'm still very fond of you. But you've become a luxury I, I simply can't afford. Who are you going to marry? Darling, <laughs> you'll never guess. Not in a million years. I shall soon be the wife of your publisher and employer, Charles Moncourt. Moncourt, mais pourquoi? Oh, darling, you know why. He is rich. He can afford to give me all the things I want. No. No, that I will not allow. Please don't be tiresome, darling. You know I detest the scene. Besides, I see no reasons why we can't go on being friends. Friends? Well, of course. See, I have brought you a... <laughs> one might call it a going away present. You writers are so symbolic. I thought you'd appreciate this. A symbol of the future to commemorate our past. It's a genuine crystal ball. Au revoir, Edmond. Charles will be waiting for me. Oh, darling, as soon as we are settled, you must come and have dinner with us. One should not destroy a thing of beauty because one despises the giver. You know, my friend, we shall find a place for you. of the future. Perhaps she's right. Perhaps in the future I will learn to love, or not as well, but much more wisely. Uncle Andre. Ah, there you are, my boy. I knocked and knocked and knocked and no one came, so I walked in myself. Well, what is this? A new acquisition? A, a gift, Uncle Andre. A gift? Uh -huh. Do not tell me who it was from. Let me see if I can guess. Cannot tell the time by it. Birds cannot build their nests on it. Marie. How did you know that? Well, it is so like her. Lovely, but quite useless. We. Oui. Ah, I see that you still love her. I don't know, Uncle Andre. I don't know whether I love her or hate her. Oh, that is a very bad sign. Let us go indoors, and I will attend to this matter myself, personally. <laughs> come, come, come.
law. Let me have Marie's letters. How do you know I have any? Oh, oh mon cher, the valet and my nephew. You could not possibly fall in love with a woman who did not write long, passionate love letters. And as a writer of sentimental nonsense, undoubtedly you kept them. I'll let me have them. What are you going to do with them, Uncle? Uh. This! Uncle, Andre! Oh, 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 oh. As a seasoned campaigner in the game of love, I am going to give you some very sound advice. And as a well-brought-up young man, you will do me the courtesy of listening. Very well, uh, Monarch. First of all, you must know that a love affair is gay. Joyous. When it is over, it is over. Finish. Oh, one does not cling to it as a miser to his gold. Perhaps you're right. Perhaps, but it is of a certainty. This advice I give you is the most valuable. Furthermore, the only cure for a love affair is still another love affair. Oh, Uncle. Ah, Uncle. In this matter, how lucky you are to have me as your uncle. You have heard, no doubt, of my little black book. <laughs> oh, you should have. It is well known in Paris. <laughs> Perhaps as famous as the Arc de Triomphe and the Champs Elysees. Uncle Andre. I have an engagement this evening with a most enchanting creature, a dancer at the Moulin Rouge. You will dine with us, and we will see if she has a friend. Uncle Andre, I know that you're trying to be helpful. And I thank you. But I must try to get some work done. It goes hard, eh? Oh, it does not go at all. Ah, well, perhaps work may be the answer. But I doubt it. But remember, in any case, your Uncle Andre has the right solution. I will ah, remember. I go now. My engagement uh, begins at 8 o'clock. I will drop in to see you again, and I hope to see an entirely different attitude. Au revoir, mon oncle. My dear Edmond, my presses cannot remain idle while I wait for my writers to write, you know. I've tried, Charles. If he doesn't come, he doesn't come. <laughs> Nonsense. You have written many love stories before and written them well. Surely you must have been in love? Of course he was. Edmond was in love with me. <laughs> you see, Edmond, what man has not envied me? I am sure you must have been in love with Marie. But she not with you. That is the great difference. Every man would like to believe that he has won for himself the one woman that every other man would be proud to call his wife. See, there is a subject for another great love story. It is so simple. I'll try, Charles. Good. Tomorrow morning I leave for London and then Amsterdam. There shall be English and Dutch editions of your last two books. And while I am gone, you will visit Marie. But uh, Don't you wish to visit me, Edmund? Oh, I do. But there's my new book. You have always been entertaining for our Marie. She is fond of you, and I don't want her to be lonesome. It will be such fun having you over for tea, Edmond. You will visit Marie. That also is part of our agreement. Edmond is a very sensible and agreeable young man. He will do exactly as he is told. Splendid. Two weeks, and I shall return with contract. Money, Edmund. <laughs> Money. Madame?
Shall we dine here tonight, or is it the gay life for you? The gay life, always. But uh, tomorrow, Philippe. Well, why not tonight? You tire of me if I make my visits too long. Besides, you know I have to be at home. I'll never tire of you, Marie. What's wrong? I have a strange feeling, as if someone were staring at me. I'm staring at you. You're very beautiful, Marie. I'm serious, Philippe. So am I. There is nothing to fear, my darling, except the swiftness of time until he returns. May that day never come. You look terrible. I presume this means you have been working. I've been trying to work, if that means anything. And what have you accomplished? Frankly, very little. Ah. I see you have not forgotten her. I think about her, Uncle. In fact, I've been ordered to think about her. Mon has gone out of town on business. He asks me, me, mind you. If I wouldn't mind dropping in on her occasionally so she would not be lonesome. That fool! He knows I was once in love with Marie. Ah, then he is not a fool. On the contrary, he is very intelligent. Well, if I can find the time, I'll drop by. I disapprove. But I'm afraid you will find the time. Edmund, my boy, you must forget this woman. Let me get rid of this silly thing. No! I'm sorry, Uncle Andre. I'd mean to shout at you. <laughs> it is nothing, my boy. Yes. Sit down. Edmund, this is not good. Never have I seen you in such a state. Oh. Overwork, unrequited love. <laughs> These reasons are not good enough to explain it. Now, what is the real reason? I cannot tell you. Ha! Oh, cannot tell me. Since when have there been things we cannot tell each other? You and I. Out with it, boy. Uncle Andre. Uncle Andre, I fear I'm going out of my mind. Oh. <laughs> Evalier may gamble too much, drink too much, chase too many women, if that is possible. But, but to go insane? Ha, never. Uncle Andre, listen to me. I see things. What sort of things? Where? In that crystal ball. I can see Marie, wherever she is. Do you really think you are going out of your mind? It's so clear. I can see wherever she goes. I can even see whom she is with. Whom she is with? Not her husband? No, he's not back yet. Oh, Edmund, I am disappointed. You are jealous. You sit here, clutching the ashes of a burned-out love, tormenting yourself with this jealousy. Uncle Andre, it's nothing like that at all. Then I say to you, the rest of it is nonsense. Oh, Edmund, I have the solution. Come with me tonight. Let the perfume of Paris sweep away these cobwebs from your brain. I thank you, Uncle Andre, but I cannot. Ah! Now I lose my patience. And why is it you cannot? I have... There are so many things to do. Then do one thing for me, I ask you. You say you know where Marie is. Then go there and see if she is there, or go to her house and see if she is not there. 
If you are going out of your mind, at least let us find out in time to do something about it. <laughs> Good morning. Charles. Edmund. Uh, well, this time I can see you have truly been working. Yes, yes, but you've, you've come back early. Almost a week. And with wonderful news, Edmund. Contracts in London and Amsterdam were signed. And I have promised them at least two more new books by you. Thank you, Charles. You don't sound very enthusiastic. Oh, I'm, I'm very grateful. Oh, but I... Stopped here to tell you the good news even before I went home. I've been working very hard. No time for frivolity, huh? No. But you did have time to visit Marie. I tried to, but I've been very busy. Busy? But too busy for a friend? You can see for yourself, Charles. I've hardly had time to leave this study. Oh, but I asked you to. I'm sure Marie did not miss my visits. Now, what do you mean by that? Nothing. It's just that I've been working very hard. Now, you approve of that, don't you? Yes, but one visit you might have made. All right, I did. Then why do you say you did not? I... She was not home. Not home? Where would she go? In heaven's name, Monco, how do I know what your wife does when she's not home? I told you. I stopped by and she was out. Oh, for a ride, perhaps. Perhaps. Edmond, is there something wrong? No. It's just that I've been working very hard. But you said that before. There is something on your mind. What is it? Nothing, Charles. Can we discuss London or Amsterdam? Is there something I ought to know? I am an old friend, Edmund. I deserve an answer. You know all there is, Charles. No. There is something about Marie that you won't tell me. She hasn't left you, if that's what you mean. She's been home every day. First you say you did not visit her. Then you say you did. Now you say you know she is home every day. How do you know? Leave me alone, Charles. Stop asking me questions I cannot answer. It becomes clearer. There was time for frivolity. And what you cannot bring yourself to say is that Marie has found another man. And that man is you. No. It's not me. I give you fair warning, Valier. I shall ask Marie. And if what I suspect is true, I will kill you. Good morning, my love. I thought you never cared here. Oh. I'm running out of life to the maid. Surely no one suspects. And that feeling of yours, does it still haunt you? Philippe, I don't know. I, I just don't know. After today, I, I don't think I should see you again. But, darling, we have an entire week. Even this morning, on my way from the station, as if eyes were following me. <laughs> yes, of course. You are very beautiful, Marie. Why should not all the eyes of Paris be staring at you? Darling. Valier! 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 Where is she? I warned you, Valier. Where is she? Charles, she's not here. You lie. First you besmirch my name, then you make a fool out of me. Where is she?
Charles, I have not talked to Marie since the day you left. You and I were friends long before either of us ever met Marie. Will you not take my word that I am not involved with her? No, I will not. You know more than you will admit. If you were my friend, you would tell me what you know. Where does she go? Very well, Charles. I would spare you if I could, but... Every day, Marie goes to Paris and meets a man. Who is this man? I do not know his name. I know where he lives. He's an artist, a painter of beautiful women. How do you know all this? I have watched them every day since you left. You are a vicious liar. I was a fool to think that I could trust you. I met your uncle André in Paris, and he told me that you have not left this house in days. That is true. Nevertheless, I have seen them. <laughs> you are not even a good liar, Valier. Do you think I would believe anything you say? This has gone far enough. Charles, you want proof? Yes. Very well. I'll give you proof. There. There what? Your proof! What am I supposed to see? Marie and that painter. Are you blind? She has on a grey dress with the lace at her throat and on the cuffs. Don't you see her? Edmund, there is nothing but a crystal ball. What is this, another one of your tricks? Charles, what's happening to me? I don't know. Either you are a very good actor or... I don't know. Very well. We'll find out which. Where are you going? To Paris. Either Marie is with this man right now, or you'd better have me committed to an asylum. Oh, forgive us, mademoiselle. We've come to the wrong place. Edmond, let me take you home. You are not well. I should have realized. They're here. I know they're here. One final chapter remained after the door closed behind Charles Moncourt. Based on Edmond Vallier's testimony of what he had seen in the crystal ball, Moncourt was granted a divorce. The only time that evidence of this kind has ever been accepted in a court of law. But although his testimony was accepted, there has never been an explanation as to how happenings of this kind occur. Please join me again for another journey into the world of the unexplainable which lies behind the veil. Good night. <laughs>